Hello and welcome to our beginner series for V-Ray for Cinema 4D. This series is designed to help you get started with the product and start rendering in no time. In today's video, I'll guide you through the process of rendering a sequence of images, which will allow you to create your very own animations. To follow along, make sure to download our project files. You can find the link in the video description so you can explore the scene at your own pace. All right. Let's dive right in. We've set up a basic scene featuring a slow camera pan, focusing on our hero object, and an animated butterfly to guide the camera's focus distance. It's all set and ready for rendering. Before we begin, let's walk through some key settings. We start off by setting our resolution. You can input your preferred dimensions directly, or use one of the presets available. Up next, we need to decide on the range or number of frames we'd like to render. You could either do this manually or select the All Frames option from the drop-down menu, which will render the entire project. Underneath that, there's an option to skip certain frames by increasing the frame step. For instance, if we set it to 2, every other frame will be rendered, giving us half the original animation. But for now, Let's keep it at 1 so every single frame gets rendered. Next, we move on to the Save dialog to pick a location and file type for our final frames. For additional info about using the V-Ray output system and render elements, you can check out the video on rendering settings for still images. Since our main focus today is on animation-related settings and features, do ensure that you've set a range of frames that goes beyond just one frame. Because if you limit the range to the current frame, V-Ray will only render that one, leaving you with a single frame saved to your disk. If you want to render multiple ranges with unique start and end points, it's as easy as duplicating our render settings. Setting the ranges we need and using Cinema 4D's Take System to render them out. For this project, I'm aiming to render the complete animation from beginning to end. So just a single range and one set of render settings will do the trick. We can also use Cinema 4D's Command Line Mode, which is really handy because it lets us render the project without even launching the application saving us some system resources. Remember to create a shortcut to the command line, include the render command, and specify the exact file path to the project in its target field. Next up, we have to adjust the image quality settings. Let's start with the image sampler options. Here we have two choices, progressive or bucket types. If we go with the progressive type, we also have the option to set a time limit for each frame. This is particularly useful for rendering previews of our animation as it ensures we get the output nearly at the exact time we specify. Another great feature for animations is the resumable rendering option, which can be found under the common tab. When activated, V-Ray will save our output progressively, so if there's an interruption like a power cut, we can just pick up from where we left off without losing any progress. Just make sure you've got the V-Ray output system turned on and have set a path for your images. A really helpful workflow is to use Cinema 4D's token system. If you're already comfortable with them, simply type in the one you need. For example, using dollar frame can be handy for animations. Or, you can click on this drop-down menu and select a different one. When we use resumable rendering along with the progressive image sampler, we can add samples iteratively. This way, we can render the entire sequence at a lower quality. Let's say we allow each frame to render for only about a minute. For a slightly less grainy result, we could also use a denoiser. Actually, we could even reduce our output resolution and lean on NVIDIA's AI upscale feature. 
but for now, let's stick with the default V-Ray denoiser and render a preview of the animation. Once this preview is approved, we can simply add more samples to each frame and continue the rendering process instead of starting from zero again. Next, let's take a look at the GI tab. We can stick with the default settings. Just remember that for more complex lighting situations, we might need to increase the subdivisions to around 3000 and boost the retrace threshold to three. But remember, the default settings are always a solid starting place. Now we can add all the render elements that we need for our project from the Render Elements Manager. Finally, if we want to use the V-Ray Denoiser for our animation, it's best to set its mode to only generate the required render elements. And once we have our frames rendered, we could use the standalone denoise tool or the V-Ray denoise plugin in Nuke. Now we're ready to hit render and see our sequence come to life in either the picture viewer or in the V-Ray frame buffer. I've sped up the rendering process to save time in this video, but typically a single frame would take about an hour and a half to render. If we multiply this by 120 frames, our entire sequence will take approximately 184 hours to complete. A fantastic option is to use Chaos Cloud to render the whole sequence for us. Simply click on Submit to Chaos Cloud from the top V-Ray menu, and then export your scene for remote rendering. This will launch a submission page in your default web browser where you can organize your scene by giving it a proper name and placing it in a project folder. We also have the option to modify the frame range we want to render. By default, it'll use the range we set in Cinema 4D. One of the biggest advantages of Chaos Cloud is its ability to render many frames all at once. This means a bunch of frames are being produced simultaneously, which significantly reduces the time it takes compared to rendering the same frames on a single workstation. For instance, our 120 frame animation took less than three and a half hours and the best part? Our workstation was free to use the entire time. When it's all done, we can preview the sequence right on the Chaos Cloud page. If we're satisfied with the results, we can download the whole animation with a simple click of the download button. In this video, we've walked through how to set up the render settings for animated projects and have explored several handy features that can make our workflow much smoother, like the resumable rendering and the Chaos Cloud rendering service. Thank you for sticking around till the end. By now you should know how to render animations with V-Ray for Cinema 4D. Don't forget to check out the other videos from our Getting Started series for V-Ray for Cinema 4D or visit our blog and documentation for more product tips and tricks. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. See you soon.